And now this, this morning, uh, we're going to go into our family altar time, and I've uh, asked Ruth to come and lead us in prayer this morning. So Ruth, if you wouldn't mind coming. Let's bow our heads before the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, Lord, you truly are worthy of our praise. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity that we have, that we can gather in your house, that we can sing songs of praise and adoration to you, that our hearts are lifted up, Lord. And Father, thank you, Jesus, for the blessings that we have Thank you, Jesus, for the freedom that we have. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross that we can have eternal life, that we can have our sins forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, for Marnie and for placing upon her heart, Lord, to work in this area. Oh, Jesus, wrap your protecting arms around her and around those, Lord, that will be involved in this ministry. And Father, thank you for the different ministries, outreach ministries that our church is involved in. We thank you, Jesus, for the Mama's Meetup. Thank you, Father, for those that participate in it, for Sherry as she leads it, Barb as she helps, Tammy and Martha. And Father, I just pray, Jesus, that you would just work in these young moms' hearts and lives. Oh, Father, that uh, the love would flow through Sherry and Barb and uh, Martha and Tammy. Father, we just pray, Jesus, that their hearts would just be open, that your Holy Spirit would cultivate the soil in their hearts, that the soil would be soft and fertile, that when seeds are planted, Lord, that they would take root and grow. We lift them up to you, Jesus. Father, thank you for the closed Facebook moms Oh, Lord, we pray, too, that your hand would be upon each mom and dad and little one. And, Lord, I pray that some of these moms, Lord, place it upon their hearts, Jesus, that they would start coming to Mama's Meetup. And, Father, we lift up to you the, the Meals and Ministry Outreach people, Lord. Again, Father, work in their hearts and in their lives. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunities that we have to reach out, to show love. Father... There are so many things that are going on in the world today, Lord. Father, I just pray that you'd be with those on the, the East Coast, Lord, that have been hit by this hurricane. Oh, Father, homes have been destroyed, lives, Lord, have been changed. And I just pray, Father, that your loving arms would just surround them, Jesus. Lord, I just ask that you uh, would be with the kids, and the workers tomorrow as the kids are out of school. Lord, we just pray for your protecting hand to be upon all activities. And we just pray, Father, that it would be a good time, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, again, Lord, for your love, for your guiding hand upon our lives. And Father, on Tuesday, we have a church board meeting. And I pray, Father, that uh, you would give to us wisdom and guidance and direction and discernment and unity, Lord, and the decisions that we as board members need to make. We pray, Lord, for your blessing to be upon each member of the board and their respective responsibilities. Thank you, Jesus, for all those that come alongside each of us in our ministries. For, Father, we could not do it on our own. We thank you, Lord, for them and for their dedication and for their assistance. Bless them, Father. Bless them abundantly. Lord, I pray that you'd be with Pastor Brock as he brings your word to us. Oh, Jesus, that our hearts would be open and receptive to your word. But most importantly, Jesus, that when you knock on our heart's door, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, that we would be obedient. Thank you again, Jesus, for your love, for your guiding hand upon each of us. And Father, I also want to bring to you those, Lord, that are a part of our church, but through different circumstances are not able to be in church. Oh, Father, those that are watching through the Zoom, those, Lord, that um, just are not able to, Father, bless them. 
may they realize and know that they are loved, that they are not forgotten. And I just pray your blessing to be upon them. And now, Lord, be with Pastor Brock as he brings your word to us. Speak through him, Lord, and touch our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Ruth. I appreciate that. So before we get rolling, I do want to show a short clip. So, Mike, if you wouldn't mind playing this clip. of this beautiful day since we're together we might as well say would you be mine could you be mine won't you be my neighbor won't you please won't you please please won't you be my neighbor a neighbor you know what these are they're suitcases but I'm not going away no, I'm using them to carry things. You want to guess what might be inside the big one? This big one down here? You want to guess what might be in there? You want to guess what might be inside this little one? I'll show you. This little suitcase has little hats in it. Mm -hmm. Look at those little hats. Look at that. Aren't they great? Now the big suitcase has big hats. So when you hear that song or hear his voice or see his sweater and his kids, what kind of emotions does that elicit? Anything? Uh, for me, it's nostalgia. Uh, you know, he was before my childhood, but he was also in my childhood. Fred Rogers was around for a long time. But one of the things when I hear his voice and I see him speak, and it's one of those things that he is talking to me. You guys are not even here anymore. He's talking to me. He's, he wants to be my neighbor. And he's never had a neighbor like me. He wants to be my neighbor. He looks at me. It's just, I hear it and I, I just wonder how in the world does he keep up that demeanor? And you know, it's always a question to ask. Fred Rogers probably wasn't the same man off screen. But he was. He was. And it, it's crazy that his wife, Joanne, they were married for a long time. People used to ask her, come on, Fred can't be nice all the time. He can't be a genuine person like that all the time. And she said, no, he, he is. He works hard at it. You know what Fred used to do in order to kind of let out stress and emotion, he went swimming. He would swim laps, and while he was swimming, he would pray. And he was committed to his Bible reading. He was committed to spending time in the Word and precious moments with his Savior. And because of that, it allowed him 
to go out and engage a world that was chaotic and frustrating in such a way that people gravitated to him. And when a child came and spoke to him, that child was the only one that mattered in that moment. The child was the only thing that mattered. All the busyness of everything going on, the one focus was on that child. No matter the time constraints for shooting a, an episode, to the bemoaning of his production staff, we've got to get moving, we've got things to do. But no, it's about this child. And we've been talking about radical hospitality, and I mentioned this week we would talk about some practical elements of things we can do. And throughout the weeks, I don't know if you've noticed, but this table has changed week in and week out. I don't know about you, but I would love to go to each and every one of these parties. <laughs> they seem like a blast. We've, we've had a movie night with pizza. That's an easy one to throw together. Invite somebody over, hey, let's go, let's watch this and order some pizza. To French fine dining, ooh, or English, my mistake, French fondue. Anybody done fondue lately? You did? You did it recently? No. Oh, I was about to say, you didn't invite me. <laughs> uh, but when we start thinking about hospitality and radical hospitality, uh, I appreciate Marnie talking to us about an element of it, of going and extending ourselves into welcome to people that are not like us. But Scripture also talks to us about hospitality and hosting uh, those in our sphere, those within the church and things like that. And so we're going to look at a story of hospitality and see two elements of it. And there's two things that go on. But I just want to remind you of the definition of radical hospitality that we've been kind of working from, uh, from the book, The Gospel Comes with a House Key by Rosaria Butterfield. She says, radically ordinary hospitality is this, using your Christian home in a daily way that seeks to make strangers neighbors and neighbors family of God. Remember, it's always about that reaching into and seeing lives transformed. This morning, we're going to find ourselves in Luke chapter 10. So if you'd like to turn there. This chapter is all about hospitality, good, bad, and the otherwise. The chapter starts with Jesus sending out the 70, and he's basically saying, hey, as you go town to town, if people aren't hospitable to you, if they're not hosting you, which is the cultural norm, if they're saying, no, you're not welcome, what does he tell them to do? Shake off your sandals, leave the dust there, and move on. That's, that's pretty harsh language. But hospitality in the time of Jesus' walk was radical in our sense. Because you were going to host the stranger. If they came into town and they needed a place to stay, you were going to put them up. You were going to provide food. You were going to be the bed and breakfast, whether you wanted to be or not. And then Jesus gives a parable of the Good Samaritan. This one's familiar to us, the story of an injured man. Someone who is the least of these in society. And a couple people who uh, are religious by all accounts, and, but they're above the needs of this man. And finally, we have the Samaritan come by and sees him and says, Oh, come on, let me get you some help. And so we see this radical hospitality in this story. And then immediately, Jesus goes into a visit with Martha and Mary. So we're going to read uh, verses 38 through 42. It says, Now as they went on their way, he entered, that being Jesus, a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. So there's a couple of unique things about this. One, uh, Martha's home. Martha's home. Women did not hold property very often in Jesus' time. She's got a great responsibility. This is her space. This is her place, and it is her responsibility to welcome Jesus into her home. Now, when we talk about Jesus going, do you think Jesus was by himself? 
I can put you up in the spare bedroom upstairs. You're just one guy. No, at a minimum, Jesus has his closest disciples. But we've just learned about a story of 70 who have gone out and come back. And more than likely, this group is massive. I've hosted Thanksgiving for 10 or 12 people, and my stress level goes, whoosh. It's scary, because you need everything to come out at the same time. Otherwise, your green bean casserole is cold, and your turkey's undercooked. It's stressful. And so all of a sudden, we have Martha. It's her responsibility. It's her place. And it's not just Jesus. It's Jesus and his disciples. But Martha has a sister named Mary. Martha, I mean, sorry, Mary sits at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. Uh Uh-oh, another unique thing. Mary is not where she's supposed to be culturally. Martha, we've we've got a responsibility, so Mary, I need you in here with me, doing what we're supposed to be doing, and you're out here listening to Jesus. So Martha decides, uh, well, I've had enough and I'm going to ask the Lord about this. So she says, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. So here all of a sudden we have Jesus looking at Martha and and giving her this soft rebuke of, hey, you're, you're worried about these things, but Mary is here and she's being impacted by me, by the living word of God. And so now we look at this and we go, okay, so... Is hospitality not a good thing? Jesus is scolding Martha. Is she not supposed to be a hospitable host? And and now Mary's the one that's being lifted up. And how do we handle this? What is this tension? But I want to say to you that the, the hospitality that we show to the world, whether that's the practical aspects of inviting our, our brothers and sisters from the church into our home and speaking into their lives, it can only happen when we are connected to Jesus. And so when Mary's sitting there, she's not just doing nothing. Like I mentioned, Fred Rogers, he had to be diligent in his walk with the Lord. He, he was set aside time to go swimming and to pray, and, and he was faithful in that because he knew if he didn't, the impatience, the frustration, the, the lack of care would well up. And so for us, when we talk about radical hospitality, it's not just something that we can go do on our own. We have to remember that like Mary, sometimes, a lot of the times, most of the time, we need to be sitting at the feet of Jesus. Because we have to be transformed. We have to be transformed before we can truly host someone with grace and mercy. Because if it was left to our own devices, we would be protective of our stuff. We wouldn't want to share it. We would want to look at people and judge them and say, yeah, but but look at you. But no, when we talk about hospitality, Jesus gives this great parable of reaching into the least of these. And then he says, hey, but don't get so worked up about that that you forget to rest in me. Don't miss this. And I think sometimes we can get to that busyness because those days where we go to Thanksgiving and it's your turn to host, you don't even get to sit down and eat it. You don't even get to sit down and eat it because you're so worried and stressed about those things. And so we start talking about hospitality amongst us. Uh, Think about those things. And I asked the kids this, and uh, Bailey tried to make me a liar. (laughs) But if I were to ask you, when have you been hosted? In recent days, think about when you've experienced hospitality. 
because it goes both ways. Sometimes we are going to be the host, but other times we're going to be the hosted. And we have to be willing to be and play both roles. And so what does that look like for you? When have you been hosted? When was a season or a time in recent days that you went, oh, life has just been rough, but so-and-so welcomed me into their space, into their life, so that our lives can be lived together. Has that happened for you? Have you experienced that? I hope so. What about the other way around? When was the last time you reached into someone else's life and invited them in? Have you experienced that recently? Or do you get stressed about the, the do's and the don'ts? And Because when we look at these dinner parties that we've seen, sometimes it's overwhelming. It's like, well, I can't do that. But can you extend a smile to someone? Can you extend a handshake and a genuine question of how are you? And when you ask someone that, be willing and ready to respond if the answer is more than fine. Have you guys ever been asked that? Is that just the formality? Hey, how are you? I'm fine. And then we move on. But when we talk about hospitality, we have to be willing to go from these surface level questions and go into where we pull someone into our life. Just like Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to what he says, we have to be willing to listen. Just as the Lord speaks to us, we have to listen to those that we host. I don't know about you, but sometimes I want to be really protective of things. Whether that be my time, or my resources, or my family. You know, sometimes we want to build up these boundaries, and I think we have to have them. But any time we talk about hospitality, there's going to be a vulnerability there. You can be hurt. You can be taken advantage of. And a lot of times it can jade us to the point where uh, I'm over that. But I encourage you that as you sit with the Lord and you... His spirit wells up in you as your heart is changed and transformed to, to see people as they are. That you'll learn that oh, just as the Lord has loved you, you can love others. And so what are some practical things that you are doing to show hospitality within this community? We heard Marnie's story about radical hospitality of going out into the community. Uh, I was encouraged to hear Skip ran into... Uh, Joel and Heather at Superstore uh, this week, and guess what? They've, they've got a motel room set up. They've, they've made some connections, things like that, so good things are happening for them. Uh, so we've heard some stories of those, but what are you doing? And I want to hear some practical things. What are you doing to say, uh, show hospitality to your church family? Anybody willing to share? Shelly? Well, particularly, but if you want to talk about your coffee thing, that's good. Hold on, I gotta get you the mic. Because I like your coffee thing. I do. Because I liked what Marnie had to say. Um, <laughs> um, we do, we, we're, Daryl and I are really blessed. So we've always had a thing where we always have things happening in our home and we're and our friends and family are always inviting us out. So that's never been an issue. But um, one thing that I really love is our neighborhood coffee parties. And we have done this for years and we're really blessed actually. There's um, two or three other couples in our neighborhood that are Christians and we started this years ago where we would invite we, we'd have them in our front yard and just have coffee and cookies and something to drink or we did a barbecue one time nobody everybody comes and they're the guest except we so we all put it on our, our committee and um, and it's relative it's really quite inexpensive to do that so one time we did a barbecue and just had hamburgers and bags of chips and ice cream cones 
People love it. We just had another neighborhood coffee party yesterday. It is supposed to go from, was supposed to go from one to three. We went till 4.30 um, because people didn't want to leave. People are hungry to connect with others. So it's so simple. You can set up a coffee pot, a thing of lemonade, and put out some chairs in your front yard and put some flyers in people's mailboxes and say, come and sit and visit and people come. Not everybody does, but all, we had about 30 people yesterday and that was in a block, two blocks of of neighbors, so that's actually wow. pretty good. So we love that, and we can, and we also do caroling too at Christmas time, which people also love because they open up their doors and they sing with us, and it just gets people connecting. So I encourage going along with what Marnie's saying. She wants to reach it and help the homeless, um, which I love because I have a heart for that too. But I also have a heart for people. Period. Daryl and I are burdened for. The road is narrow <laughs> and few will enter in. And so we've got so many unsaved that we just got to reach, <laughs> right? And just people to love on and they're right next door to us, all around us. Yep. And it's so easy to reach into people's lives. Anyway, I talked enough. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Last uh, Sunday night, we had uh, from one till, um, I mean, uh, from three to five, and we have a barbecue. And the first one we did last year, but Jim and I supplied all the food. We told them just to bring their chairs and because we wouldn't have enough lawn chairs. So this year, I felt a little bit older, and I said, we're going to have a potluck. And everybody brought a dish for it, and we supplied We said, we supply the hamburgers and the buns and the, on, uh, that kind of stuff. And it, it's a, in our block, but every, we have new young people in our block this year. And there's houses being built at the end of our house, or our street, and there's going to be more. But I also said, when we finished this year, I said, okay, we've done it, organized it two years. How about somebody else do it next year? And the young, one of the young couples said, we'd love to. Awesome. So it's great. Good. Okay. Anybody else? We won't tarry you real long time. The main thing I want you to be aware of is uh, we all want to be hosted. We all need to be hosts. Okay. So as you go and as you uh, live life over this next week, over the next month, we're, we're coming up on Thanksgiving. We're coming up on the holiday season. It's easy to... Uh, start thinking about these kind of things, the generous type items. Um, but let us make this a lifestyle where we start talking about radical hospitality, not just as the season of things we're doing, but as we sit at the feet of Jesus and he transforms our, our hearts and our love and passion for others, that it becomes a lifestyle where we get to see uh, strangers become neighbors and neighbors become the family of God. So keep doing what you're doing. And if you're not doing it yet, let's get you moving. And just keep in mind, it doesn't have to cost a lot. A simple smile. Yeah, Timmy's drive through that's always a fun thing to do. Uh, but it doesn't have to be a big, elaborate thing. Uh, because really what people want is what Mr. Rogers is very good at giving. And that is making you feel like you are the only one that he's talking to. And I don't know about you, but when I spend time with Jesus... When I rest in his presence, I get that exact same feeling. So church, let us be generous. Uh, let us host and let us be hosted. Get in that vulnerable situation. Uh, find yourself being willing to speak into someone's life and have them speak into yours. Our praise team is going to come and we'll close in a song, but let me pray for us as they come. Lord, as we meditate, as we think about what does it mean to be hospitable, Lord, I pray that we will not get caught up in the busyness, not get distracted by what are the, the practical things that we have to do, and let those things fall into place, because they are important. We know they have to come. But Lord, that our life and passion will be so wrapped up in who you are 
that we will be overwhelmed with love and concern for all those that are in our lives. And that we will be willing to step into vulnerable places to open our homes, open our time, open our resources to others. And Lord, as we are invited to be hosted, that we will come in and we will be compassionate. We will allow the host to speak into our lives. Lord, sometimes that's not easy. We build up walls and barriers and we want to protect those things that are ours. But Lord, as you work on our hearts, may we be open and receptive to other people. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.